cosplayers. I'm Travis, and this is Maker Holic. This video is going to show you how to make cardboard armored gloves tailored to your hand size. Let's get into it. Tools. Scissors and or knife. Marker or pencil. Measuring tool. Hot glue. Materials. Cardboard. Rubber bands. Large and small. Thick plastic waddle bottle. The process. Cut out a 4 inch by 9 inch piece of cardboard with the grain running long ways. These numbers represent your finger circumference and length. If you think your hands are bigger than mine, you may need to increase the 4 inches width, especially with the thumb, but the instructions are the same if you do. Mark the middle with a measuring tool to help evenly line up your fingers on the cardboard. Draw two lines top to bottom over these marks. Draw a horizontal line 2 inches from the top. Lay your finger down directly below this line and mark the cardboard at your joint wrinkles. I marked my joints beforehand. Draw a horizontal line at the top and bottom joints. I also draw a horizontal line halfway between the bottom two joints. I outlined where to cut in marker. Be careful not to cut past where the lines intersect. I cut just short and twist them off. You may need a knife to cut this piece out. Bend downward at the lines. I recommend you use a straight edge for precision. Lay your finger face up below the top bend. Then mark its height against the upward bent cardboard. Bend inward at this mark. You want it tight but comfortable with a slight upward angle. Fold the sides up and mark them like so with a straight line. Cut just below these lines so that they line up under the remaining fold. Hot glue the front end like so and hold it firmly in place until set. Repeat for the top. To clean up the edges, hot glue them and use scrap cardboard to scrape it off like so. Next, rub a pen or pencil along the wings to curve them like so. Put your finger in the hole and pull the flaps up like so. They should rest firmly at the base of your finger. Fold the flaps in and cut them so they have a quarter inch of overlap. Pull the ends open a quarter inch deep like so. Then, dab with hot glue. Fold them together. Draw a horizontal line half an inch down from the bottom line, then another half an inch lower. Mark two dots half an inch apart in the middle of the lower line, then draw vertical lines downward along them. Draw angled lines between the two horizontal lines like so. Next, cut along the lines. Repeat the process for your other finger. The thumb is different. Here's how you make the right one. Like before, cut a 9 inch by 4 inch rectangle. Raise the 4 inches of width if you think your hands are bigger than mine. Like before, mark the middle. Your digit width. Draw a horizontal line 2 inches from the top. Mark your joints and draw horizontal lines along the marks and another horizontal line half an inch up from the bottom joint mark. Measure the distance between your bottom thumb joint and the wrist at an angle like so. Then, mark this distance from the bottom joint line down and draw a horizontal line along it. Mark 2 inches up from the horizontal line on the left vertical line. Mark 2 inches to the right from the base. Then, draw a curving line between these points like so. Draw a 45 degree angle down and to the right from this point on the lower joint line. Draw smaller curving lines at the corners like so. Cut it out. Oh, gross. Cut it out along the lines. Then bend it. Measure your thumb height. Then, fold the sides inward and mark it like with the fingers. Cut just below this line. 
glue it together like with the fingers. And finally, glue the wings like with the fingers. Next, orient a piece of cardboard with the grain going vertically. Measure the distance from the base of your middle finger to just past your wrist. Then, the distance between the side of your palm and next to the thumb. Draw a rectangle with these numbers. Then extend the horizontal lines. Choose a vertical line and mark one and a half inches down. Then mark half an inch outward and upwards from this point. Next, mark half an inch out and down from the top. Draw lines at 45 degree angles like so. Then draw two horizontal lines like so. Repeat for the opposite side. For the bottom, mark one inch out from the base, then mark one inch up from there. Draw a horizontal line outward as I did. Mark two inches up from the base and draw an angled line like so. Repeat for the other side. Cut this shape out along the lines. Bend firmly at the horizontal lines, then gently bend the center portion every half an inch or so. Bend the upper wings inward over your knuckles and hold them in place. Then, outline the shape of your fist and wrist evenly on the cardboard. Continue the angled lines all the way down. Mark the edges like so to mirror the line on the other side. Bend the cardboard every half an inch outward along these planes. Then bend once half an inch inward on both these lines. The folds should meet at the bottom. Hold the upper wings in your fist and fold the lower wings and hold them like so. Examine the piece from the top. The right side should just barely cover the side of your palm. The left side should stop just after your pointer knuckle. The bottom should wrap inward along the wrist allowing free movement. And the tips of your knuckles should be directly under the front. Next, mark the peaks of your knuckles with at least a quarter inch of overlap. Outline a curve or angle to match the shape of your hand. Rub a pen or pencil along the bottom wings to make them flexible. Fold the wings tightly into your hand. Observe the angle between the cardboard and cut a triangle to fit it. The top edge should fit snugly, while the bottom is horizontal to your wrist. It should resemble a right triangle. Line up the right half of the triangle evenly over the right side like so, then outline it. Repeat with the left half on the left side. Cut off the wings along the horizontal lines. Cut the angled lines about an eighth of an inch from the line as I do. Carefully separate the cardboard to a quarter inch past the line. Be sure not to rip it. It helps to use a knife to separate the layers. Dab these openings with hot glue. Then, splice them together. Hold firmly until set. If your cardboard isn't flush, you can fix that with hot glue. The bottom wing should fold evenly across your wrist now. Cut out a one inch section of your water bottle. Gently curved parts work best, but straight parts do the job too. Cut out 10 pieces about an eighth of an inch wide. Pull a piece of cardboard apart and cut it into half inch by half inch squares. 
Mark the back side of your fingers half an inch up from the base, then hot glue an eighth of an inch wide strip from the line down. Place a piece of plastic like so, careful not to melt the plastic. Glue a square at the base over the plastic like so. Do this for the other three fingers. For the thumb, mark about half an inch in on the right and half an inch up from the bottom. Glue from the mark to the edge and apply the plastic facing inward. Finally, patch it up like with the fingers. Next, put on your fingers and hold the upper wings firmly. Mark where the fingers end on the palm piece Then draw a horizontal line half an inch below the point. Mark the center of where each finger rests on the palm piece, then transfer to the other side. Bring them inward about half an inch. Draw vertical lines down from these four points. Glue half an inch down from the horizontal lines along the vertical lines and put on strips of plastic facing inward. Oops. Patch it like with the fingers. Cut any plastic extending beyond the bottom. For the thumb, start by rubbing it with a pencil or pen from the bottom line to the first knuckle line. Ignore the plastic on the inside there. I changed the design after I filmed that part. Fold every half an inch from top to bottom, then every half an inch at an angle like so. Eyeball it to mold the cardboard to your hand like this. Glue a piece of plastic half an inch up from the bottom between the pinky and ring finger lines. Face this one to the left and slightly downward. Take five small rubber bands and hook them under the plastic strips on the fingers. Next, connect them to their respective bases on the palm. You may have noticed the pinkies on backward. Don't do that. You can taper glue your plastic down, but I leave mine open so I can replace the rubber bands as needed. If your rubber bands are loose, you can tie them off or twist them. Put the fingers on and hold the wings in. I taped them on. Wow. Make the upper wings loose enough to allow the finger pieces to move in and out easily. Then mark them like so and glue the pieces together. For the lower wings, hold them on snugly and mark the midpoint. Cut them so that they overlap half an inch in the middle, then test stretch your large rubber band over the wings. Mark where it's about 75% stretched. Cut quarter inch by one inch pieces of plastic. Use thicker plastic if you can. Glue them down facing inward like so. You should now be able to comfortably rubber band the lower wings to your wrist. And that's how you make the right glove. Mirror the instructions to make the left one. I hope you enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed making it. Now, I kept the design simple on purpose. If you want decorating tips, let me know in the comment section. And listen, it took me a couple tries to get this design right, and I'd already made four prototypes before that. 
You can do it. Do not get discouraged. If you have any questions, comment them below and stay tuned for my follow-up troubleshooting video. I'll also comment any project suggestions or song requests. If you like my music, check out a link. Props if you realize I did cover of the dang old King of the Hill thing, man. That is all. You know what to do if you like my content, and thank you very much for watching. See you later. Oh.